Welcome to another episode of the Raider Cast, your podcast for everything silver and black. I am your host, JT, and today we're going to talk about my top 10 NFL wide receiver rankings heading into the upcoming 2022 NFL season. To start off, we have Keenan Allen of the Los Angeles Chargers. Keenan Allen is coming off of a pretty damn good 2021 season. 106 receptions for 1,138 yards and a 67.5% catch percentage is insane. Uh, He has five straight Pro Bowls now. Uh, He has nearly five straight 1,000-yard season. He missed it by was at eight yards in 2020 so that's pretty damn good he's always he's a very consistent wide receiver for the chargers always has been throughout his career he had that one injured year in 2016 and then the next season he came back uh 1393 yards on that comeback season in 2017 won comeback player of the year and got a pro bowl and to not have him in the top 10 would be uh, disrespectful to him now, I know Julian Edelman had him in his top three wide receivers going into the upcoming season, but I don't see Keenan Allen being a top three because there's way too much young talent that are that is just better than Keenan. However, he is still a top ten talent. Up next, we have Mike Evans at number nine, coming off another Pro Bowl season, his third, his fourth in his career. Uh, he had a thousand yards on seventy-four receptions for sixty-four point nine percent. Uh, completion catch percentage sorry and he played a stellar 20 uh 21 season uh i believe he's gonna have another very consistent very good 2022 season uh there's no reason to think that he won't he has an eight year stretch of a thousand yards or more uh he has three four pro bowls he has he made the second team all pro in 2016 he came in third place in um all pro or offensive rookie of the year and to think that he'll slow down now at um after eight years of a thousand years uh eight, eight, uh, to think he'll slow down now after getting a thousand yards in the past eight seasons is not gonna happen uh i think he'll be another a thousand plus yard receiver uh, especially with Gronkowski being missing from the Buccaneers team uh, and Antonio Brown missing. You really only have uh, Chris Godwin who you're fighting for receptions for, which I don't think will be a problem for Mike Evans as Chris Godwin's kind of getting older. Uh, so you'll be see Mike Evans be the number one receiver there. He'll get a ton of receptions. I think he'll get a lot of yarders next season, a lot of touchdowns. I think he's definitely a top 10 wide receiver. Now, he came off of it. An absolutely historic 2021 season. Made a first team All Pro. Has got the Pro Bowl last season. After coming back from a very injured 2020 season, after before in his rookie year putting up very solid numbers, nearly reaching a thousand yards. He was about 200 yards short, but he only started 11 games. So that's really impressive. Uh, looking at his 2021 season, 1400 yards. You have. Um, 365 yards rushing you have a total of 14 touchdowns uh, receiving and rushing um he just became a brand new uh self-dubbed wide back however i have him this low as a lot of people have him higher is because i don't believe that if he stays in san francisco he'll be used or no matter where he goes he'll be used as his wide back signature uh, from last season he does not want to be used like a running back because they'll just create a lot of wear and tear on him and his body so i don't see him playing the wide back position again this season which is why i have him at eight because i feel like if he's just a wide receiver i don't know how much impact he'll ha- he won't have as much of an impact on the team as he does as a wide back however he's still a very dominant wide receiver i mean getting 1400 yards is nothing to sniff at at all and six receiving touchdowns so using him less in rushing kind of decreased his wide receiver potency in my opinion however i still think he'll put up a, definitely over a thousand yards receiving number seven i have a j brown of the philadelphia eagles after being traded from tennessee shockingly on draft night we have a j brown as a philadelphia eagle now he's coming off of a not as productive 2021 season 
although 869 yards is still really good on five touchdowns. However, looking at his previous two years of 1,005, uh, 1,051 and 1,075 with 19 touchdowns across both seasons, uh, you ha definitely have a dominant force for the Eagles. Combined with Devontae Smith should be a very good duo together. Looking at uh, A.J. Brown, I mean, he only played 13 games last season, so it kind of makes sense that he only had 800 yards, so he can definitely get that 1,000 yards if he plays his full, you know, 17, even 16, or even 15 games. Um, his catch percentage is a little low at 60%, uh, lower than some, someone like Keenan Allen. However, I still think he can have that over 1,000 yards, and he's just a very dominant force, and he'll take a lot of defenders away from Devontae Smith, opening up for Devontae Smith, but also A.J. Brown can get those contested catches. Um, I think I'm not sure how much of an upgrade Jalen Hurts is over Tannehill. However, I think Jalen Hurts might be a bit of an upgrade because I am not a believer in Tannehill at all. I think Jalen Hurts definitely has a lot more talent or potential than J uh, Ryan Tannehill does. And along with Devonte, I mean AJ Brown opening up for Devonte, Devonte will open up for AJ Brown. As AJ Brown didn't really have a second wide receiver with him in Tennessee as Julio was out for almost the entire season. So looking at into 2022, I definitely see AJ Brown taking uh, that back up to that 1,000 yards and having a lot more touchdowns in Philly. At number six, I have the Buffalo Bills wide receiver one, Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs is coming off a 1,200 yard season with 10 touchdowns and a 62.8% completion percentage, which is somehow a worse season than his 2020, which was an absolutely insane 127 receptions for 1,500 yards uh, eight touchdowns and six seventy six point five percent complete uh, catch percentage. I and he made All Pro first team for the first time. He made the Pro Bowl for the first time with Josh Allen. I think being traded to Buffalo was the best thing that could have happened to him. It was a probably one of the best trades for each team. It was a win for both because you'll see later on why it was a win for the Vikings. Uh, Stefan Diggs is definitely a game changing wide receiver which is why he got his money this offseason he's going to put up great numbers again in buffalo i don't see him slowing down at all unless some freak injury hopefully it doesn't happen unless somehow freak somehow freak injury hap occurs i don't see him slowing down anymore i think he'll have another 1200 plus yard season in buffalo now tyree kill is gone from patrick mahomes to his now teammate tua mm. At number five, I have the former Kansas City Chief, Tyreek Hill, who is now laying himself in Miami with Tua Tagovailoa as his quarterback. Tua is not Patrick Mahomes. I don't care how accurate Tua is, Pat, he does not have the deep threat ability of Patrick Mahomes. But that does not mean Tyreek Hill won't have similar yards that he did in KC. It just won't be on those deep passes. It will be more on those quick slants or quick just throws like five yards in front of Tua, 10 yards in front of Tua, even maybe even 15, and then Tyreek just flying away into the end zone. I don't see him slowing down at all. I really don't. I think people definitely overhate Tua. Um, I definitely think that he'll have a big impact on the Miami offense. I think he'll help Tua become the quarterback that he was projected to be coming out of uh, Alabama. And I think that too, I think that it was a great move by uh, the Chiefs to, to offload his uh, contract uh, for Miami to pick him up and to show the world what Tua can do with a three-time first-team All-Pro uh, all pro wide receiver and was it six-time Pro Bowl wide receiver in Tyreek Hill. At number four, I have Justin Jefferson, who needs really no introduction he came onto the scene in 2020 and took the lead by storm winning offensive rookie of the year he was all pro second team and he won the pro bowl in 2020 he had 1400 yards exactly seven touchdowns on 88 receptions he was a monster um he definitely was showed why he should have been one of the top picks in 2020 and shouldn't have fallen as far as he did in the 2020 draft uh, I don't see him slowing down at all either. I think he's going to have the same similar year of all pro, second team, pro bowl um, kind of year. Uh, 1600, 16, 16 yards, uh, 10 touchdowns, 64.7 catch percentage. He's just, he's just an insanely good wide receiver. And 
with the Minnesota Vikings moving away from the more defensive-minded Mike Zimmer head coach to the more offensive-minded uh, head coaching of, I forget who it is, but it's definitely an offensive coach. I just don't remember what the name is. Um, I think he'll have just as good. He might have a little less just because 16-16 is really hard to repeat, but he'll definitely have upwards of 1,300 plus very easily in that offense. At number three, I have the 2021 Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jamar Chase, as my number three wide receiver in the NFL for the upcoming season. Second team All-Pro, Pro Bowl, beat out Justin Jefferson's 1,400 yards to have 14, 40, 1,455 receptions in his rookie year. He had 13 touchdowns, 63.3 catch percentage, and he had an 82 as his longest touchdown. He 128 receptions as well. I mean, sorry, 81 receptions as his targets so was 128. 81 receptions for 1455 yards. Uh, 18 yards of reception is just insane. He is definitely a monster with Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, and uh, Boyd all uh, still in uh, Cincinnati. I don't see him having anything but possibly an even better year having the same leap as his lsu teammate justin jefferson in his second year especially since joe barrio will be most likely sacked less with his better o-line he'll be able to get the ball to jamar even more than last season i don't see jamar be, uh, having a lesser season than his year i think he'll be even better in his second year at number two, I have Devontae Adams traded to the Las Vegas Raiders this offseason from the Green Bay Packers, reuniting with his college teammate from at Fresno State in Derek Carr. I see him be, still being that top wide receiver in the NFL. He had 1,500 yards on 123 receptions and 11 touchdowns last season with a 72.8 catch percentage just insane numbers first team all pro all pro bowl and the season before that he had a first team all pro and pro bowl on one of the best uh one of the best seasons by a wide receiver in a long time 18 touchdowns 1300 yards on 115 receptions for a 77.2 completion percentage and a 98.1 yards a game he was a monster in 2020 still a monster in 2021 he has he's a five-time pro bowler five straight for the past five seasons i don't see him not getting an all uh, alt pro team first team do not see him not getting a pro bowl i think he's going to light it up with Derek Carr. i think their connection is not is going to be just fine i don't think there's going to be any problems there he's not going to slow down he might have a little less yards just because of the system he's going into and a more spread offense and more rushing focused offense but i still think he'll put up easily 1300 yards no problem at number one i have los angeles rams at number one, I have Los Angeles Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup taping, taking the top spot. After winning Offensive Player of the Year, it's hard to not put him at number one. He made first team all pro. He made the Pro Bowl. He came third place in MVP voting, which is absolutely insane. Only behind Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Um, he had an absolutely ins one of the, the best, if not the best season by a wide receiver ever. 145 receptions for 1900 yards 16 touchdowns just absolutely insane 114.5 yards a game on 75.9 percent catch percentage you can't not call him the number one receiver having that relationship with matt stafford grow even more this offseason and having an just he will have another insanely good year i don't know if he'll be able to repeat his 2021 season because he um it's hard to repeat something that great again however i definitely see him having another absolutely incredible year in la so that is my top 10 nfl wide receiver list if you disagree with any of my rankings tell me in the comments below and don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell for whenever i upload every tuesday and friday 3 p.m eastern time uh 12 p.m uh 12 p.m pacific time sorry i get confused sometimes um thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day raider nation peace out